<laughs> I have a gift for that. Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much, Chancellor Robertson, faculty and staff. I'm so honored and privileged to be with you all tonight. My name is Mark Tomlin, as some of you may know. I was born and raised in Panama, Central America, and I can tell you that the culture shock coming over here was memorable. <laughs> My first week, I learned a few things about greetings. So in Panama, instead of a handshake, we have a more personal approach with the ladies. <laughs> Without thinking, I leaned in for a cheek kiss when I met a fellow student. Let's just say she wasn't quite ready for that. <laughs> Learn that lesson real quick. No, but in all seriousness, I'm very honored to share that I first heard about Regent University from my great, great aunt, Nancy Moffitt, who happens to be one of the original 19 founders and also happens to be turning 104 years old this year. <laughs> and now being at Regent, I can tell you that it's been the best time of my life. The faculty here pushes me closer to the Lord every single day. And there are even times, this just happened the other day, where I can feel the Holy Spirit speaking through my professor. And I'll just even start crying a little bit. And that's only math class. <laughs> but tonight I would like to share with you a story about an experience that happened that shook me to the core. A few weeks ago, I was on the front lines of Ukraine. Ukraine. I was interning with a CBN News Corps correspondent named Chuck Bolton. And every single day, there were bombs, missiles, rockets coming into the city. People were dying left and right. And the city, in many ways, was like Virginia Beach. There were families out going to stores, parks, and restaurants. Except in this city, at any moment, a Russian missile would suddenly decimate an entire neighborhood. One day, we visited a town that had been recently occupied by the Russian soldiers. And the stories coming out of this place broke my heart. The Russian soldiers had come in, murdered all the men, assaulted the young girls and mothers alike, and even converted their homes into torture chambers. I'll never forget what our chief um, assistant officer told us. He said, the fighting was getting so bad, I told my wife, you must leave the city. She responded, I can't leave you. Eventually he persuaded her. And tragically, as she was leaving, a Russian missile hit her car. He never saw her again. The deep pain and guilt in his eyes was almost unbearable to witness. And like many of us, I am very removed from death in my everyday life. So seeing all of this death and destruction did two things to me. Number one, I said to God, God, I will never complain about anything again. Really. And number two, the war zone taught me a greater boldness for the Lord. And everyone on our team felt it. When people are dying all around you, you realize there's no time to waste. So we just started praying for everyone we met. And people's lives were being changed. I didn't know it was possible to be this bold for Christ. I felt like Paul in the New Testament. It was amazing. But when I came back to America, something strange happened. Suddenly I didn't feel the need to be as bold or to pray as much or read the Bible as much. Something felt very wrong. And then it hit me. The book of Daniel says that I am dependent on God for every breath. This means that I should be dependent on God in the war zone, the same as outside the war zone. So why did my behavior change? The answer is, there is this illusion of self-sufficiency in American Christianity. In America, we think suffering is having our Amazon package arrive late. We are pampered by prosperity, bound by possessions, blinded by commodities. It's so easy to think we just don't need God as much. Yet we also are in a war, a spiritual war. And there are spiritual casualties all around us. At least the Ukrainians can see it. So the message I carry on my heart is this. Let us be bold for Christ, as if people's lives are at stake, because they are. Revelation 3.15, Jesus' words, and it sounds like the American church. When I read it, I almost jumped out of my seat. It says, for I know your deeds. You are neither hot nor cold. I wish you were either one or the other, but because you are lukewarm, 
I'm about to spit you out of my mouth. For you say, I am rich, I have prospered, and lack nothing. But you do not realize that you are wretched, pitiful, poor, blind, and naked. My brothers and sisters in Christ, starting with myself, may I not be lukewarm. Lord God, help me be bold for your kingdom, no matter where I am. Because in the end, being bold for Jesus is all that really matters. Thank you so much and God bless you.